Hey guys, it's Hunter. Welcome back to another episode of Ask Fish. As A, I finally found the password to the Discord server because this is the series where I answer your questions on Discord. So don't forget to join our server if you got a question for a future episode, a link in the description. But it has been too long since we've done one of these and there's a lot to talk about in the land of gear and guitars. So smack a like on the video if you're going to enjoy it. That actually massively helps appease the algorithm and for every like, I will give Pringle a strawberry. He loves those. She's a very healthy dog, you see. Much appreciated. And with that, let's jump into a question. Rob J asks, Josh Gilbert of Spirit Box playing a new custom Charvel bass. Metallic silver finish, multi-scale with two soap bars. Looks like Bartolini's or maybe Nordstrand. Nerdy bass shit. Love to see it. Sandima's body and classic Fender headstock with clover tuners. I hope we will hear more of this beauty. This would also be the first Fender, Charvel, and Jackson bass that is really suited for modern metal, and also the first multi-scale instrument from Charvel. Yeah, so a lot to unpack there, but so honestly, I totally forgot Charvel even made basses and not just 80 super strats. Like when the fuck did Frank Bello of Anthrax get a signature Charvel bass? Thought he was still ESP. Guess Joe Duplonier was ESP's revenge served very cold. My ignorance aside, we move. How crazy is this though? And it's part of a larger trends and Charvel Jackson Fender transformation, but we'll get back to that in a second. But so dude, I was pissed. This is like my fourth time missing Spirit Box when they came through on their recent run with Gojira and Korn. What a fucking lineup, by the way. Hola, Fridis. Un momento, por favor. So anyways, best I could do was live vicariously through tour pics on Instagram, and truth be told, I was trying to get a better look at the Relict Evertune Offset Jackson Mike Stringer's been using. He's now got a third one in Hunter Green, and obviously I'm a fan on multiple levels. And then a picture of Josh Gilbert popped up, and I was like, oh, that's an interesting new zing. Wait, what the fuck is that logo on the headstock? Is that a fucking five-string multi-scale Charvel bass? And yes, it was, in fact, a fucking five-string multi-scale Charvel bass. So this is interesting, right? Like, Charvel's general vibe is 80s shred modified fenders. Their main job is basically slapping Floyds on strats. Happy hot rods. But something is going on with Fender specialty brands. Jackson is starting to embrace the ultra-modern. They've done fan frets for a couple of years. Not basses, though, but this from Charvel? very unexpected. It doesn't exactly fit the happy tread vibe, and Charvel hasn't even done fan fret guitars yet. But yet, here it is, a five-string multi-scale Charvel bass, and it is sick, you know, as far as basses go, I guess. So far, just the one color in a matte silver metallic, which almost looks black in some lights. And Josh has been a dingwall player for well, I'm actually not sure how long, but at least since As I Lay Dying's comeback with My Own Grave in 2018. So you can definitely see where the influence comes with this, but this time in a classic Fender P-Bass form. And I hope this actually is a signature and he's not just road testing a prototype for a regular production model. I mean, that would be kind of sick too, but Josh Gilbert finally deserves a signature. He kind of reminds me of Jason Newstead, both powerful bass players, but super underrated in terms of how much they contribute as band members, especially for the live shows. With the utmost respect to Rob Trujillo, who is just a monster of a bass player, Jason's vocals brought a different dimension to Metallica, for the live shows especially. And similar thing with Josh, the current As I Lay Dying lineup is stacked for talent. And one second. Alright, crisis averted, everybody calm down, we move. But so what I was saying is the current As I Lay Dying is completely stacked with talent and Ken Susi is of course the homie. But Josh brought a different dimension to the band with what I'd call probably the closest thing there is to perfect clean metalcore vocals. Well, uh, Hunter from the future here, cause, uh, well, in the time between filming and editing, the situation with this band went to complete shit. What the f happened? So I have to issue a minor correction here. Uh, the band is no longer stacked for talent because the band is no longer a band. Again, there's nothing left but the wreckage of a greater foundation, right? <laughs> God damn it. You know they have an album coming out in like two weeks? The whole situation is just insane and bizarre. But anyways, back to Josh's much more stable and healthy situation as bassist and clean vocalist in Spirit Box. 
uh, a band that is very much not dying, but like his vocal harmonies add so much to The Void Live, for example, it just wouldn't sound complete without him. That kind of overall musical contribution to a band is so underappreciated compared to individual virtuosity, but that aspect of bettering the musical collective I guess that's the phrasing I'm going with. Less celebrated, but it's also incredibly important. So you'd love to see it finally be rewarded with Josh Gilbert getting a signature model. That also happens to be the first multi-scale Charvel ever. And isn't it interesting how so much gear news, either directly or indirectly, involves Gojira in some capacity right now? Like Ford flying whales of separation. Joe Duplantier was one of Charvel's biggest names with them for over a decade and had one of their coolest signature models. And obviously it was huge news when he was playing ESP at the Olympic ceremony opening games in front of like a billion people. And the Switch was officially announced a couple of weeks later. But now Josh Gilbert looks to be Charvel's latest artist pickup and Spirit Box just so happens to be on tour with Gojira. It's all connected. But speaking of connected, it seems that 734,985% of viewers have not connected with the subscribe button. Consider doing that if you're enjoying the content. We just hit 200,000 subscribers. That is insane. Let's see if we can get to 250K. But now what's also interesting is that a few months ago, Charvel actually teased another super modern metal base, an all but confirmed signature model for three of Sleep Token. Roasted maple neck and fingerboard with a reverse vintage style headstock and the vintage toothpaste scripts logo. I'm such a sucker for any modernized vintage concepts. So sick. Love how how there's one tuner on the opposite side like a five string bass would have to and look at that pickup configuration double fishman fluence bass humbuckers that's nuts a bass fluence quad bucker fuck and recently he's been using ones with red covers which fluence currently doesn't do for bass pickups possible sleep token custom series bass fluences Maybe? Guess they could also be seven string guitar pickups, since they're the same soap bar dimensions. That'd be fucking wild. It would be a multi, multi voice quad bucker in a bass. Someone needs to conduct that experiment immediately for science. But so, anyways, one high profile modern metal bass is a coincidence two high-profile modern metal basses is a pattern. Something is happening here. This is like a new era for Charvel. No Gojira Joe, an increased emphasis on the low-octave rumbly boys for modern metal. This is not the Charvel we're used to seeing. Jackson and Charvel are both going crazy right now, all of a sudden jumping from more old-school metal vibes to super modern and up on the stage with some of the biggest bands in the new generation of heavy music. Super interesting transformations to follow. Love to see it. So we'll have to wait and see what happens but here's where I'll throw it to you. What do you think of Charvel's new emphasis on modern metal spec basses? What do you think of Josh Gilbert's multi-scale or three's quad bucker models? And who do you think Charvel should try to pick up next? And what would their signature bass look like? Any and all thoughts? Drop them down below. Now, besides just Jackson and Charvel making big modern metal moves, there's been so much going on in the world of guitar. So now it's time to run through some of the new gear releases and just some random interesting guitar. Keep these on your radar. ESP Japan have just announced their latest signature, the Stream Miku Custom V2 for Hatsune Miku, who is an anime character, kind of. This is not a real person. Now in the Western world, this concept sounds utterly bizarre, but in Japan, popular anime franchises are massive cultural forces. Gibson have done less Pauls for Hitari Goto in Boki the Rock, and Gori Yuto in Bang Dream. Fender did a Telecaster for Asuka. Thank you to everyone for the brutal corrections over my Asuka pronunciation. I will never make that mistake again. We move. The Miku situation is slightly more strange though because she originated as the personification of a Vocaloid software bank, but she's become a virtual idol as her lore has expanded. She has a recently released boxing game. Apparently now she is getting her own anime series that'll chronicle her adventures. She's insanely popular, and ESP and Miku run deep. There's been the first ESP Japan Miku Custom, the even more expensive 15-year anniversary edition, an affordable grassroots bolt-on, a grassroots acoustic, the Edwards Snow Edition, the custom shop Wings of Creation showpiece, and demand warranted this second ESP Japan with an alder body instead of ash, new aesthetic details, and a $5,000 price tag for an artist who is not real. Japan is wild, man. Then moving over to Fender, the player series, the attainably priced line of modern Fender spec instruments is no more. 
because Fender have released the sequel, the creatively named Player 2 series with a staggering 80 new models. Three highlights you should know about. Number one, Rosewood fingerboards are back. Pal Ferro was one of the original series' biggest criticisms. Remember, in context, they launched right after those overly strict CITES rules on all of Rosewood. So at that middle import price level, everyone was looking into Rosewood alternatives. Honestly, I don't mind the feel of Pal Ferro, but man, it could look pretty cheap. The darker Rosewood is just much nicer. Number two, the Player 2 Telecasters in Butterscotch and White Blonde now have the more traditional Ash body, same as the 50s originals, instead of the Alder on the Player 1s. And three, the Jazzmasters now have the actual correct pickups instead of humbuckers. Even though that made the original unique and that was kind of cool, before the Player 2, the cheapest Fender Jazzmaster in the lineup that sounded like a proper Jazzmaster with Jazzmaster pickups was not cheap. Although it's been pointed out by Offset Fanatics that Fender hasn't gotten the controls right, so there is still some artificial differentiation at play. And overall, there are a lot of subtle changes from the Player One series as well. The Player Two necks have a slight tint. They have the same classic gear tuners previously only found on the higher end American Performer models. And the fingerboard edges are highly rolled for that played in feel. And I am so glad that's becoming more and more standard on attainably priced import models. It feels so good. So the players are still contemporary under the hood, but back to more classic Fender influence this time around. And I've got a real soft spot for the player series. Still a massive fan of my player telly. It was my first actual Fender that I owned after I went through the metamorphosis that apparently every guitarist goes through at some point. For the longest time, I thought the Telecaster was such a gross looking guitar. The headstock is just too small for the body, which is just this big slab of wood with too much space in between the pickups, like brontosaurus ass proportions. But I'm telling you, man, one day you just wake up and you're like, you know what I really need? I really need a Telecaster. If it hasn't happened yet, it will. Trust and believe. Usually happens around the same time you figure out what the fuck a 401k actually is, but we move. One of the great things is the player platform is so moddable. I've actually got a whole video throwing hundreds of dollars worth of mods at the vine. It's a ton of fun. And there are a few player one models that didn't make the cut for the player twos, like the HSH or plus top strats or the Duosonic, but seeing as the first series evolved over its lifespan, we'll see how the player twos evolve over time as well. Then Gibson dropped an ES Supreme, and this is the first time the series has expanded outside the SG and Les Paul shapes. It comes in Bourbon Burst, Seafoam Green, and Blueberry Burst, which are pretty much the exact same colors the limited 2015 Les Paul Supreme semi hollow came in. Not sure if that was intentional or not, but it's a nice Easter egg throwback. For pickups, Splittable Burst Bucker Pros, and there's now a Black Beauty version. As far as I know, this is the first time there's been a triple humbucker non-custom shop production ES-335 and it looks pretty sick, I'm not gonna lie. Split block mother of pearl inlays on an ebony board, a staple of the Supremes since inception, diamond headstock inlay from Gibson's 1940s archives, the signature aesthetic detail for the 2024 reboot. The original Les Paul Supreme was unique because it had an aggressively chambered body with an arched front and an arched back. Those features did not carry over. So in a sense, the ES Supreme is arguably more authentic to the spirit of that initial design than even the latest Les Paul Supreme is. Then, kind of related to what we were talking about earlier, Gojira's Joe Duplonier has officially left Charvel and joined ESP, but they'd been together so long you'd almost considered them inextricable, and it's been confirmed that he is exclusive to ESP now, so let's do a quick recap of his decade plus long history with Charvel. Might be the last chance to pick up one of these Charvel Gojira Joe signatures before they go for ridiculously jacked up prices on Reverb. Joe started using Charvel in 2013, playing both a Skatecaster and a prototype of what would later become his signature model. The 2014 USA signature eventually came in satin black and in satin gray, dropped the Strat headstock and adopted a tune pneumatic bridge and tailpiece combo. In 2017, they released the Import Pro Mod Sandima Style 2 signature in satin white. It retains the sort of Les Paul in disguise vibe. Most of the same specs, mahogany body, mahogany neck, compound radius ebony fingerboard, 
but the affordable version came with Duncan Design pickups instead of the Charvel custom MFB humbuckers. Then in 2020, they dropped my personal favorite, the more premium spec Pro Mod, with his then new signature DiMarzio Fortitude Bridge humbucker paired with a PAF 36th anniversary neck. Natural mahogany with a black pickguard, worn nickel pickup covers, big block inlays, absolutely love this blend of vintage and modern. Now, it's awesome for Joe that he's on the same artist roster as Metallica, well deserved, but not gonna lie, it's gonna be weird never seeing him again with a Charvel Telly. And finally, a legendary brand is back. Kind of. Starting in the 1950s, for about 60 years, Manhattan's 48th Street was once a guitar mecca known as Music Row, and home to the famous Manny's Music Guitar Shop. Eric Clapton bought his Les Paul Custom there, Jimi Hendrix bought his Woodstock 1969 Strat there, founder Manny Goldrick was apparently the one who recommended the wah pedal to both, even Buddy Holly bought his famous Strat there. The Wall of Fame featured signed photographs of all the stars who had visited that hallowed ground. Led Zeppelin, the Rolling Stones, Janis Joplin, the Beatles. Manny's neighbor, Sam Ash, bought it in 1999 and then closed it in 2009. But with Sam Ash now bankrupt, they sold the Manny's trademark to Vista Musical Instruments, owned by the Singaporean company Bandlab Technologies, who also now own NME. And in recent years, Vista have also bought Heritage Guitars, Harmony Guitars, Mono Gig Bags, Tysco, and Dawson's. They've built a portfolio of historic brands that still have irreplaceable lore and name value, but needed investment to recover and thrive in the modern space. Manny's former home was demolished in 2017, so whether it's a new modern physical location or a digital relaunch, we'll have to see what Vista's planning. And now it's time to hear from yet another adoring fan. It's the high praise of the week. You have a punchable voice. Damn, the audio equivalent of Backpfeifengesicht. Did I pronounce that right? Either way, that's high praise. And real quick, I want to apologize to you guys. The content just has not been as consistent recently as it should be. I was getting so burnt out and so often with how much I was trying to do all at once while making sure the quality of the content was as high level as you guys deserve. Like, I hate half-assing content. It feels disrespectful to every person who's pressed the subscribe button. And lately, I just haven't been able to deliver as much content to that high standard. I feel like I haven't really had a proper break where I haven't been stressed out about all the unfinished stuff I was leaving on my plate in years. So it's been a massive learning experience, tearing down the entire workflow, figuring out what I needed help with, learning how to trust other people for things that I've grown quite attached to doing after years of doing it myself, usually in an overly specific way. So it's been time consuming, exhausting, but really exciting. I'm so stoked for the future of this channel and this community. What I'm trying to say is thank you for being so, so patient as all the behind the scenes stuff is being figured out. Scaling it up, building it out, that's coming along really nicely. It's like every day I'm discovering new challenges I didn't even know existed when it comes to scaling up a YouTube channel, but it's coming along nicely. And that was a really roundabout way of saying it's just been way too long since the last episode of Ask Fish, which is intended to be a weekly series. But since we're getting to the end of this video, and if you need more guitar content in your life, since last episode, we unboxed a whole ass shipping palette of angle amps that they were gracious enough to send over for us to check out together. My God, there have been some great unboxings on the channel, but holy shit. This is the most outrageous thing we've ever unboxed together. About 150 Avoir du Poix pounds of just pure fucking tone hand-built in Germany, which was a great way to celebrate becoming a German citizen, but we move. Love the Engel Savage 120 Mark II. I've been using it in pretty much every demo for the last couple of years. Been dying to check out the rest of the lineup. Finally got to play through an Engel Fireball as well, and damn. Engel amps are so fucking good. And it was awesome playing a few back to back to finally hear and feel the differences. Then if you missed the last episode of Ask Fish, a whole 
three weeks ago, my bad. We talked about how it was teased during the Olympics opening ceremony, then officially announced that Gojira's Joe Duplanier, one of Charvel's biggest artists for over a decade, was leaving to join ESP. We talked about what the inevitable Gojira Joe ESP and LTD signatures might look like. We also talked about how LTD is finally entering the affordable roasted maple game with a new series that looks damn nice for a budget guitar range. I'll leave links in the cards and in the description for you to check out. But that'll do it for this week's episode episode of Ask a Fish. Looking forward to what you guys have to say and leave a question in Discord for a future episode. Don't forget to join, link in the description. Huge thanks to all my amazing Patreon supporters who make each and every video possible. Their names are up on the screen right now. You can become a patron to add your name as well as get bonus extras. You can also join as a channel member or pick up some comfy ass merch. Every bit helps grow the channel. Social media, Discord server, and links to all the gear we talked about are in the description. As always, thank you so much for watching. You've been awesome and I will see you for the next video.